in extra hard words when they write letters. <clears throat> I still enjoy that because I know what it's like. <clears throat> I was telling Miss Jessica and Rob the other day that uh, uh, the hardest was Mil Mil Mildred King. Woo! Even before the handwriting got bad, it was like really hard to read. And uh, Jane Patton was another one. She was hard to read. Um, amen. It was, uh, <laughs> uh, it's all right. It's all right. I, um, as we, the more we get plugged in, right, to um, things of ministry, things of um, our missionaries and, and whatnot, the, the more we get to, uh, appreciate personalities because as we all very clearly know there's personalities that we just aren't very fond of um, sometimes um, but when it comes to the Bearmans, man I like those guys they have a great countenance about them uh, they're very real um, I just I just enjoyed them like I feel like I could go on a trip with them and just be chill with them they're very down to earth and uh, I, I so appreciate that family and I, I liked hearing about them and, and hearing Brad Tony try to say those hard Germany words. Amen. Galatians chapter 4 and Genesis chapter 12. Galatians chapter 4, Genesis chapter 12. Lord willing, we'll be finishing uh, chapter 4 of Galatians. You know, it's exciting looking back. You know, we went through basically all of the Acts. We, uh, and just on our Wednesday nights, we uh, went through uh, all of Paul's missionary journeys. And we took our time through it. We didn't really speed through it. And we hit every topic along the way, and guess what? We're going to do it again one day, and Lord willing, we'll go a little deeper than we went last time. Um, but we're already coming in, just two or three more weeks, we'll be done with the book of Galatians. That's, that's awesome. That's just from being here on a Wednesday night. Imagine if we studied at, at home on our own. Woo! We'd be as smart as Miss Rachel. Not as good looking, though, but smart. Amen. Amen. This evening we'll be toggling between the two, mostly in Galatians, but we'll be in Galatians and Genesis this evening. Galatians chapter 4, verse 21, we'll pick up right here. <clears throat> he said, tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? That's a term we can understand. Don't you understand what the law is saying? Uh, you say, well, what law? The law of flesh. He's saying, don't you know what the law is? And would you, would you rather put yourself under it? Verse 22, he said, For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Brother Shine, would you open this message in a word of prayer, sir? Amen. Uh, with the Bearmans on my mind and, and, and the letter and the prayer we just heard, I, I listened to a preaching message today, and, he, and, and the, the pastor referenced missionaries, and he said, you know, there's goers and there's senders. Goers couldn't go if there wasn't any senders. That means God doesn't want everybody to be a missionary. Thank God for the missionaries. And I, I personally believe there ought to be a whole lot more. I believe there ought to be a lot more pastors, a lot more teachers, a lot more everything. But, but we all can't be missionaries. There's got to be senders. And that's our job. And we get to be a part of that. And our church has been a part of that. And we've been growing in our missions. And I'm excited about that. I, we've made that um, a major goal for our church this year. And we're nailing it. Amen. <clears throat> Where was I? Oh, amen. So, Jump back in Galatians, Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Let's just clarify the context, because remember, we spent three weeks in chapter 4, and we don't want to just look at the end of the chapter and forget what the beginning of the chapter was talking about. Galatians chapter 4, 4 says, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. That's 
what law? The law of flesh. Talking about Jesus Christ. We know that. To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. The main context of this text is the liberty that we have in Christ. Really, really, if there's a main theme of the entire book of Galatians, book, letter, whatever, it's liberty in Christ. As in the context is God brought a son to the seed of Abraham. God promised that. That's why it's called the promised seed. And just because Abraham thought that he could help God out by bringing the seed in himself um, <laughs> doesn't mean that God would bless that with Hagar. In fact, in fact, that caused a whole lot of pain and agony and suffering and uh, uh, uncomfortableness. That's a good way to say it. It's not. Um, but it, it didn't bring anything good. Did God give him grace to have, uh, to have a son through Miss Hagar? Sure, sure. Did, did God allow Ishmael to be born? Sure. Was there a lot of consequences because, because of it? Sure. Can we have a child out of wedlock? Sure. God's got grace, man. Uh, can, we, can, can we as a whole church run down to Walmart, fill our carts and steal everything and bring it back here and have a party? Sure, we can do that. God has grace for that. But there's consequences for it. Turn to keep, keep your place in Genesis or Galatians four. Let's jump to Genesis chapter twelve. Just a quick recap of the background of Isaac and Ishmael. You say, "Well, I already know." Well, we need repetition. Ben was telling me tonight that he's teaching. Uh, he's been teaching the kids over there, the 12 tribes of Israel and all about them and the significance of them. And, and I think he's only like on like four or five out of the 12. He said, Dad, I, I, spend, I spend a lot of time reviewing every week what we learned last week. And he goes, I might be going too slow. I said, no, that's perfect because we have to learn by repetition. I said, especially for the kids, review is great, but same with us. I mean, same with us. We learn by repetition. Just because we heard it before doesn't mean uh, we're good to go. Amen. Amen. Oh, I got so many thoughts in my mind coming to stories on that. Amen. But a quick recap here. God first promised Abraham that he would bless his seed, his seed being his offspring at age 75. Verse 4, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. Verse 7, chapter 12, and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Then the next five chapters uh, uh, in Genesis there, uh, in Scripture reveals their the, the ages of Abraham and Sarah when God uh, uh, re, uh, reaffirmed his promise and, 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 and when she had uh, uh, Ishmael and, and all these things and when God revealed the promise to Miss Sarah as well. But basically it's this. Abraham was 75 when he was given the promise of the blessed seed. Abraham was 86 when Ishmael was born and 100 when Isaac was born. Think about that. That would make Sarah 76 when Ishmael was born through, through Hagar. And, 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 yes, in 90 when Isaac was born. Think about that for a little while. <laughs> Amen. Uh, look, I, I'm, I'm going to be 40 next month, and, like, um, it doesn't even sound good to me. I mean, like, I can watch y'all's kids for a couple hours, but, like, I'm good. Yeah, no, she's, she's, yeah, amen. <laughs> yeah, she has something to do with that, you know. Amen. Oh, back to our text, Galatians chapter 4. We'll be in Genesis later, but Genesis chapter 4, 24, back to our text. Paul continues, he says, Which things through an allegory, for these uh, are the two covenants, the one from the Mount of Sinai, which gendered to bondage, which is Agar, talking about Hagar, Amen. Just refresh your mind what allegory is, and, and I was pretty sure I knew it. It wasn't just a court word, uh, but it's a continued metaphor. It's a description of facts by using an illustration. We know that, but like, I, I had to refresh myself on that. Amen. Um, 
Uh, Webster's Dictionary used Animal Farm as a great uh, example of that, or Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, and it, that stuck with me pretty well. So who is the bondwoman? It's Hagar. It's Miss Hagar. Who is the free woman? Miss Sarah. So who is born of Hagar, the bondwoman? Ishmael. We know this by reiterating. We're learning this. Amen. God said that Ishmael was born of the flesh. Who was born of Sarah, the free woman? Isaac. God said that Isaac was by promise, as in the promised seed. So now with that freshly in our minds, let's go to Galatians 4.22. Galatians 4.22. With that freshly in our minds, it says, For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. Who are we talking about? Uh, Hagar and uh, Sarah. But he who was of the bondwoman was born of the flesh. That's Ishmael. But he of the free woman was by promise. That's Isaac. But he who was of the bondwoman was born. Uh, oh, I, I, I copied it twice. <laughs> That's awesome. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount of Sinai was generated to bondage, which is Agar. What are these two covenants he's talking about? God made a promise both to Sarah as well as Hagar. Turn to Genesis 21, 14. Remember that a covenant is a promise made between two people. And when God makes a covenant with somebody, you better believe that he holds his promises. I think that Sarah and Abraham were getting a little antsy thinking that God wasn't going to come through. And to their defense, we would have done, not done the same thing, but we would have thought the very same thing. Um, Lord, I'm um, 75. That's silly that you would think that. We're going to have children. You know, then at 86, I think it was, when Ishmael was born for, for Abraham. Like, they're old. They're old way past the, 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 the baby factory done been closed up. It's probably not politically correct. Let's look at the covenant with Miss Hagar. Genesis chapter 21, verse 14. Here's the covenant with Miss Hagar. And, and I'm really just hitting these main points because uh, it's like a full story. We know this, Amen. I'm just highlighting the, the, the main parts here. Genesis 21, 14 says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. This is at the point where she's, she's been kicked out. Uh, uh, Sarah doesn't want her there. And God blesses that, says, Yeah, Abraham let her go. She needs to go. And, 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 and can I just add this? That I, I am sure, I am sure, that there were people, family, friends, uh, uh, believers. I, want, I always want to say Christians in the Old Testament. I mean, you know what I mean. But believers, right, that were like, that is the meanest thing I ever saw. Shame on Abraham for kicking them out, even though he gave her a lot of money and whatnot. But still, didn't allow her baby to be. I mean, they, they did that to her. And that, man, consequences, that's awful. But here's the thing. Um, when we sin, there's consequences to that. And there's going to be a lot of heartache. It, that wasn't God's fault. That was Abraham and Sarah's fault. We always want to blame God for everything, the, the, the sin of our consequences, amen, the symptoms of our sins. We want to act like it's God's fault. Verse 15, And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs, and she went and sat down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. But she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. And here's the promise, don't miss it. He said, Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And I got encouraged reading that. I mean, we, you want to talk about someone going through depression, somebody that's going through a circumstance that it was not their fault. This was not Hagar's fault. But yet she's going through a valley like she's got this little baby. What's she going to do? There's no father. She's out. I mean, she went from base, basically having like a royal treatment, basically, to having nothing. And what heartache she's going through, but God heard her yet still, man. We, that's a, we could preach a whole fire and brimstone tent meeting message on that one. 
But I got excited as I was studying this and studying verses related to this. And I thank God for commentaries and the, and the helps that I have. It's just like your Thompson chain reference. It, it shows you the next verse that's related to that in the Bible. Man, I love commentaries because I can look and it shows me all the verses related to that. And I can get excited doing that. It's a great study help. Commentaries aren't just people's comments. There's so much more Bible helps in them. And I found out that this wasn't where the promise was made to Hagar. This is where God reassured her of the promise that was made to her. Look back, Genesis chapter 16, verse 11. I got excited over this. I got excited over this. The angel of the Lord talking to Hagar. Remember, I'm just hitting the highlighted points. You can read the details yourself. Genesis 16, 11. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, thou art with child. Talking to Hagar, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Oh, I want to. Oh, it's not the verse I wanted. I got to turn there physically. Genesis sixteen eleven. Oh, I got so excited over this too. Hold on, to your seats. Amen. Oh, there it is, verse 10, verse 10. Uh, start, 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 start in uh, um, uh, verse 9. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it should not be numbered for multitude. God's promising Hagar, I'm going to bless your seed. In verse 11, and the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and thou shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, uh, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. There's a promise made there. And here, and here after, after the child's born and, and she's being kicked out and there's, there's conflict between uh, uh, Sarah and Hagar, I mean, what did she think was going to happen? Here, the, here God says, I'm going to reassure her of the promise that I made to her. I'm going I'm to bless her seed. And God did, by the way, because the great nation that eventually uh, became of Ishmael is the Arab nation as we know it today. Uh, that's, uh, there's a direct line from Ishmael to, to the Arab nation as we know it. Obviously, not everyone who's uh, Arab is a descendant of Ishmael. Um, there was other nomads that, that went over to the Middle East, um, the sons of Keturah and the, sons, uh, the descendants of Esau. Arab means nomad, by the way. I found that very interesting. And I'd like to add, this isn't contested by anyone. Um, for one, the Bible lays out the lineage of the Ishmaelites, as well as for Isaac, right? You've got the Jewish nation. But for two, the Arab people not only agree with this, but they cling to this. Um, in fact, in the Quran, the false prophet Muhammad uh, very distinctly says he is a direct descendant from Ishmael. It's quite interesting, uh, which means that uh, uh, then the end result, and you go down the line, uh, a majority of Muslims today claim to be the descendant of Ishmael. You say, well, why do you even bring that up? Because it's interesting, because look at the next verse when the angel of the Lord is talking to Miss Hagar, given the promise. It says, and he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Quite an interesting note there. Jump back to our text, Galatians chapter 4, verse 25. Galatians chapter 4, verse 25. Back into our text where Paul's writing, he says, For this Hagar's uh, Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. And here coming up, Paul, he, he's, now, he, he's now comparing the physical earthly Jerusalem as to being under the law. Uh, allegory, as he mentioned earlier. Uh, what law? The law of flesh. 
And then, then he references Jerusalem from above as, as our heavenly position, the spiritual liberty that we have in Christ. Verse 26, he says, But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry that thou travailest not. For the desolation that hath many more, for the, des, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as uh, then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. And I can say in 2022, even so it is now. The children of Ishmael are, 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 are uh, 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 in constant conflict with the children uh, of Isaac. I mean, you want to talk about a spiritual battle, there is a spiritual battle there, without a doubt. And then in closing with chapter 4, Paul says, Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman should not be heir with the son of the free woman. Paul is telling us, hey, get the flesh out of the way. And obviously, there's allegory. Obviously, there's application in all aspects of our life. And, and that's, what, that's what the whole, the, the whole crux of chapter 4 and of the whole book of Galatians is, is get the flesh out. We got liberty in Christ. We're not under the law. Yes. Pastor Gunther, you don't have to wear a jacket tonight. Right. Amen. 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 Right. Verse 31, so then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. I am thankful right. that I can claim a stake, not as to proudly say and stand with, those guys over there say, I'm the children of Ishmael. What? Did you not read the Bible? Uh, well, they don't. They read the Quran. But, but clearly, it is not nothing proud to be the, the son of Ishmael or the descendant of Ishmael. They're wild men that don't get along with anybody else. Our liberty is not found in our carnal ability through the flesh. But rather, our, our, abil our liberty in Christ is solely from the miraculous grace of God, trusting in his promise alone and nothing added to it. I was at a funeral just the other day, and I'll close. I was at a funeral the other day. Uh, pastor Greg McFadden, he's the pastor of Prayer Baptist Church now. He's been a friend for years. Uh, um, I hung out with him back when I was a teenager. My brother uh, shared a uh, he was a roommate with my brother with a bunch of other guys. I mean, they know each other well. So we went to the funeral, and he preached a wonderful salvation message to a crowded auditorium. And his main point in his message was, um, how do you get to heaven? What is salvation? It's all of Jesus plus nothing. And he kept saying, it's Jesus plus nothing. It's grace plus nothing. And that's what Paul's saying. It's, guys, we're under grace. We're not under the law. Like, we have liberty to do things all day long, and we could do them, but there's consequences. We, we, could, we could go right steal things. We could go punch somebody in the back of the head. We could do these awful things, but there's consequences. We could have whatever standards we want. But, you know, there's consequences, and there's principles involved, and there's wisdom to be had and what you do and how you dress and where you go and what you say because we represent Christ. I thank God for the liberty we have in Christ. I thank God that Paul gave us these letters we can study. Amen. Let's close in a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to go through, through these letters. That